welcome to this week's edition of Downton Gabby, the Downton Abbey chat show. It's episode two, and things started off with the servants cleaning up Edith's toasted bedroom because she acted like an idiot. So Anna is the one who finds the photo that Edith put uh, under her pillow. It was the photo of baby Marigold, and she quickly passes it off to Mrs. Hughes. That's the last th that we saw of it in this episode. I'm sure it's going to pop up again, because you know it always does. So, uh, now that Carson is the chairman of the War Memorial Committee, um, they're like, where are we going to put this memorial? So, they're walking around, like, trying to figure it out. They got the whole committee there, and Carson is arguing that they should make, like, this quiet garden, kind of like off the beaten path so that people can go and, you know, just relax and think about their loved ones that they lost. And he wants to set it up on this old cricket pitch. So Robert is like, no, he doesn't want this. Is he being difficult because he's still bitter? Or is he actually, you know, does he have the best interest of the memorial in mind? So he's like, we should put it in town. People will be able to see it you know, easily. Um, they'll be reminded of it all the time as they're going about their days. And later on, Carson finds out that Mrs. Hughes agrees with Robert because she just thinks that it makes more sense. And this makes Carson a little upset. He doesn't like when they don't agree on things. And Mrs. Hughes is all like, we're not the same person. So there's a little bit of tension there. Um, so last week, Jimmy was fired because he did Lady Cougar. So in this episode, he was saying his goodbyes, he's hitting the road. Thomas is really sad to see him go. They had a nice little friendship going that was one of Thomas's only friends in the house, and this is the end of their bromance. So it's not all bad news. Mr. Mosley is now technically the first footman, because he's the only footman. Alright, so uh, the family, the Crawleys, were all having, I guess it was lunch together, and they're like, alright, who's got news? What do you got? What's going on in your life? So we find out that uh, this art person <laughs> wants to stop by the house to look at this painting because they're studying a specific artist, and um, it turns out that he's good friends with Charles Blake. So they're like, let's invite Charles Blake to come to the house and introduce us to his friend because they think it would be kind of awkward if the guy just showed up and was like, I don't know you, but what's up? So also Mary is talking about her trip that's coming up. The family doesn't know that she's going away with Lord Gillingham for obvious reasons. Um, so she's lying about where she's going and who she's going with. She makes up this thing that she's going with one of her girlfriends uh, on like a sketching trip, so she's like, I don't know where we're gonna be, we're just gonna drive around and if we see something we like, we'll stop. That is so unlike Lady Mary, but they're like, oh, that's nice. So we also find out that Rose wants a wireless and Robert is just like, no, we can't have that because I don't want people sitting around all day listening to that thing. Because obviously, Robert wants them to sit around all day uh, doing nothing, because that's, that's what it seems like they're doing most of the time. He wants more time for them to go and get changed for elaborate meals. So, let's talk about Edith. She goes to visit the Drew family, and it's time for Edith and Mr. Drew to go through with their plan to get her more involved in Marigold's life. So, Mr. Drew is like, acting basically, in front of his wife, and I, I think his acting was pretty obvious, but he was all like, hey, uh, Edith, Lady Edith really likes that marigold. I think we should, uh, have her be a bigger part of her life. So, he's like, we already have three kids, this would be a great help, and I think that Edith would really like it, so she should be, like, Marigold's godmother, and Mrs. Drew is not happy about it. She's like, uh, yeah, Marigold already has a godmother because we freaking christened her. She's ours now. I don't like it. We'll come back to that. There were some real meow moments in this episode uh, between the Dowager Countess and Isabel because the Dowager's still kind of worried that Isabel is going to go off and marry Dr. Clark. No, not Dr. Blah, blah, blah. Lord Merton. And then she's going to be a big deal and she doesn't want that. So, 
the Dowager is having tea with Isabel and Dr. Clarkson, and uh, the Dowager's all like, yeah, we've been invited to go have tea at Lord Merton's place. Not you, Dr. Clarkson, you're not invited. So she's like making more jokes about Isabel and Lord Merton, and Isabel makes it known, like, I have a great sense of humor, but I'm tired of this crap. So leave me alone, stop teasing me, and it was all, whoa. So, let's talk more about Mary's secret trip. Anna knows the truth about this trip. She's not going, which means they're gonna have to pack clothes that Mary can remove by herself, because she's a toddler baby. Um, but then she's all like, oh, well, Tony can help me with the clothes. <laughs> Whoa, girl. So, Mary is also like, Anna, I don't want to have any accidents, if you know what I'm saying. So, you need to go out, and you need to buy some contraceptives. Because if I go out, I'm really going to risk my reputation. What if someone recognizes me? I can't do it. So, Anna's like, well, what if I'm recognized? And Mary's like, <laughs> no one's going to recognize you. Don't worry about it. So, Anna's seeming really hesitant about this. Um... I don't blame her, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So, Thomas, he doesn't have his bromance around anymore, so he needs to stir up some stuff and entertain himself. So he decides to tell Mosley all about Baxter's past, because Mosley was all like, I don't need to know, like, it's fine, whatever. So he's like, yeah, uh, Baxter was a thief. That's what's up. That's who you're in love with. So Mosley seems really upset about it. He tries to act like he's not, but... He definitely is. So then Mr. Bates walks in, and he's all, uh, what was that all about? And Mosley's just like, oh, it was nothing. <laughs> so let's get back to Edith. She asks her parents for advice. She brings up the whole Marigold situation. She's like, yeah, I'm thinking I want to help this kid out. I made some money on my articles that I've written, and also I've got the trust fund or whatever from the grandfather. So Lord Grantham's like, you know, you can't just give up on this kid when you get bored of her, and Edith's like, oh, I won't. So then he's like, well, it's your money. Do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so back to Anna. She takes her trip down to the drugstore. It is super awkward. Um, she pulls out that book about contraception, and she's like to the lady, I want this. Give me this. So the lady's like, oh, well, I see you're married. What do you need this for? And it's just, like, it's really awkward. The lady's, like, judging Anna hardcore. So then Anna is so distraught, she runs out without getting any instructions for how to use it. So who knows what's going to happen there. But any, I think this whole thing is going to come back to bite them in the butt. I won't go into it right now, but it seems like it's going to get pretty crazy. So Mosley and Baxter have a chance to talk again. They're talking about her past, um, and Baxter confirms, like, yeah, the stuff that Thomas told you, it's all true. I was a thief. I messed up. And Mosley just doesn't want to believe it. He's really hurt right now, so it's sad to see these two not getting along because I really like their relationship. But anyway, let's talk about the Dowager Countess and Isabel's trip to Lord Merton's place for tea. That was a nice house. Um, we didn't get to see too much of this visit, but Lord Merton and Isabel were definitely still vibing. There's definitely still something there, and the Dowager Countess is doing everything she can to squash it. She doesn't want it. Um, so that was pretty crazy. And you can see, Isabel is still picking up on this stuff. She's just like, all right, so Mrs. Patmore, let's talk about downstairs for a minute. Mrs. Patmore is feeling bad for Daisy because, as we learned last week, Daisy is trying to better herself and educate herself. So she's kind of struggling with her studies at this point, and Mrs. Patmore decides she's going to set up some tutoring sessions for Daisy with none other than Sarah Bunting. So she does this, and it turns out that the only time that Sarah Bunting is available is like in the afternoon into evening because she's out of school. So this also happens to be the busiest time of the day for Daisy because they need to prepare dinner for upstairs. So it's the only time that Sarah Bunting can do, so they're like, all right, fine. So not only 
is Mrs. Patmore paying for these tutoring sessions, but she also has to do more work because Daisy's not going to be available. It's crazy, but isn't that fun, the whole mother-daughter kind of relationship with Mrs. Patmore and Daisy? I love that. So, it's especially tough because there are some guests at Downton, so they have to prepare more food. So Charles Blake arrives uh, with his friend Simon Bricker, who the upstairs crew mentioned multiple times how dark he is. And he's like, oh, he's in Alexandria for the summer, or for the winter. So I think at one point Mary called him brown. Crazy stuff. So Charles and Mary get a chance to chat before dinner. They're hanging out. And he's like, why didn't you tell me that you picked Lord Gillingham over me. That's messed up. And she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't pick anyone. He seems really pissed. Um, but he's like, yeah, it's pretty obvious. And she's like, ooh. So then Charles is like, yeah, the only reason I came here to Downton is to wish you luck with Tony in person. Yeah, um, he seems really upset, and she's kind of like, whoa, haven't seen you in a while. Maybe I shouldn't have made up my mind. So we'll come back to that. Um, but Rose knows that Sarah is still in the building, and she's like, oh, Aunt Cora. <laughs> she asks her if Sarah can join them for dinner. So of course, Cora's like, yeah, of course, you know, bring her up. So Cora sends Tom downstairs to ask her. Sarah's like, mm, it was really awkward last time, so I'm going to pass. But I mean, Lord Grantham was really happy when he heard that. He was just like, yes, she's not going to be here, because you know that he doesn't like her. So on, uh, as Tom is walking Sarah out, she's like, you definitely have a bright future ahead of you if you get away from these people, because you're just wasting your time with them. So he's like, whoa, I need to think about that. So there was more conflict at dinner between Tom and Lord Grantham, even though Sarah wasn't there. They were talking about the Russian Revolution. I won't get into it, but you just need to know they were not on the same side. So uh, let's talk about Mosley and Baxter. They had another chance to chat. And, you know, she's really upset at this point because Mosley is not happy with her. And those two are like besties in the house. They need each other. So she's like, I'm not the person that I used to be. I don't want you to think that I'm still a thief. Yada, yada, yada. She wishes that she could re rewrite that chapter of her life. And it seems like Mosley is starting to feel a little bit better about this. So that's good. Um, but now let's talk about our wait, what moment of the night. Okay, so it's, it started out pretty normal. Lord Grantham ranting away to Cora about Sarah Bunting and how he's nervous that she's like filling Tom's head with all this ridiculousness and he doesn't want Sarah to steal Tom away from them. But more importantly, he doesn't want them to take Sibby away, Sybil's daughter. So he's not happy about that. He doesn't want her raised by some harpy in an American gutter. So there's that. Um, but then it gets really crazy because he's like, Cora, tell Simon Bricker to stop flirting with Isis. What? Isis the dog. So he's like, there's nothing more ill-bred than trying to steal the affections of someone else's dog. Uh, did you miss the major sparks going on between Simon Bricker and your wife? Like seriously, those two were flirting like crazy. It was nuts. And Lord Grantham thinks that Simon was flirting with his dog. So he needs to open up his eyes a little bit. But anyway, uh, Mary was a little ticked off that night because she had another chance to talk to Charles after dinner. Uh, they had a few minutes alone and he was warning her, you need to be really, really sure before you get married again. Uh, translation, pick me instead of Tony. So she's starting to kind of second guess, I think, her decision, which she hasn't really decided yet, but she's kind of decided. So all, uh, also Anna warns her like this secret trip 
is really risky. Are you sure you want to do this? Are you sure it's a good idea? Do you know what you're doing? And Mary's just like, yeah, I'm doing this. I'm going to get some. So the next day, uh, they're setting up this wireless in the house because Rose has finally convinced Robert that they need this. The way that she got him to do this, she was like, yeah, the king is going to be speaking via the wireless to address the whole empire. So Robert's like, oh, the king's using it? Oh, all right, we'll set it up for the day. So they set it up. They're all sitting in the room listening to the wireless, listening to the king speak. They are freaking digging it. Um, and then afterwards, they're like, oh, do we really have to pack it up and get rid of it? And Robert's like, why would we do that? I wasn't going to do that. So yeah, they're keeping it. He loves it. The only person who didn't really like it, um, actually two people, Carson, because you know he's all old school, and uh, the Dowager Count Countess, who's like, no. So, anyway, uh, Edith goes back to the Druze. She's like, I accept the offer. I would like to be more involved with supporting Marigold. And it's really causing tension between Mr. and Mrs. Drew. I think this is going to become a huge issue. And I think we're going to see a lot of that next week. So while everyone was listening to the king speaking via wireless, Mary was on her way to a hotel in Liverpool. And she checked in with her own real name. That's wild. So you know what else is wild? Tony Gillingham's room is connected. What? That's crazy. It's about to get hurt. But seriously... Their plans were to go out for dinner and then come back and make love until none of until they didn't have any stamina left. So, yeah, things are getting pretty crazy on this show. Um, at the end of the show, Carson agreed with Lord Grantham that the, the war memorial should be in the village, after all, because they run into somebody when they're looking at locations in the village, somebody who's visiting the cemetery with their son, and they're talking about how they don't want the son to forget about the sacrifice that the father made, and how convenient it was that the cemetery was, like, on the way to where they were going. So they're like, whoa, that really hit home. They realize they need to have this memorial in the center of the town where everyone can see it. So Carson didn't get what he wanted originally, but he's very happy to be back in agreement with Mrs. Hughes because he doesn't like when they don't agree on things. So then, major, major drama. A police officer arrives and he's telling Carson, a witness to Mr. Green's death from last season has come forward. So be prepared because we're going to be sniffing around here. We're probably going to have to ask some questions. Uh-oh. Um, what? So I don't know. I want to know what you guys think about that. Um, who do you think they're going to be questioning? Could it even be like Anna who's involved? Or do you think Bates murdered Green? Or I don't know. It's going to be crazy. And what do you think of Mary's bold trip away with Lord Gillingham? It should be very interesting next week. Um, so I'm curious to see what you guys thought of this episode. And until next time, much love.